Boxing King Media and Association with Box Row. Eddie Hearn out here in Saudi Arabia. We get straight into it. Uh, one of the first things I want to ask you about is the whole trainer situation. I spoke to Peter Fury, Dominic Ingle in recent weeks, and they're, they're kind of against the idea of having two trainers. From your experience of boxing, what do you make of that? And do you think AJ has done the right thing having, having two guys? I think each to their own. You know, I think, of course, generally it's always better to have one voice in the corner, but you will have one voice in the corner, and, and I'm sure Angel and Robert Garcia will make sure that's the case. Um, you know, he's been part of the camp uh, Angel for a number of fights now. He's an outstanding trainer. The experience of Robert Garcia coming into the camp will also mean a lot. So I think these guys are professional enough, clever enough to figure out how it will work on the night. Um, AJ's done so much work with Angel, even pre-Robert Garcia. Don't forget, this is 11 months since AJ fought Usyk in his last fight. He's been training probably for 10 of them. And a lot of that's been with Angel. So um, I think it's going to work really well and everyone's really confident. With AJ, of course, the tactics are important and the training's important, but the belief in the team and the, the plan and, and is important. And if he believes in it, if he believes in the camp, if he believes in the team, if he believes in the strategy, he'll execute it. Last time he didn't really. He, he thought he could do something, but probably in the back of his mind wasn't actually sure and it was the wrong thing to do anyway different now. I think he's confident of, of the plan they've got in place and, and feels feels good. And you know you said there'll be one voice, do you know which one of the two that will be? I, no, I don't actually. I would think it'll be Robert Garcia almost certainly. It's not that Angel won't have a voice. They'll be talking throughout the whole fight but you know last time if you watch the fight back you're hearing two, three voices and this and that and you know it just felt a little bit disjointed so um, I'm sure Angel and Robert will be on the same page. Everyone's talking about what if AJ wins, they want him to fight Fury, etc. But I'm guessing you've got a plan A, plan B, you know, should he lose? You know, are you already thinking ahead? What what at this stage in a career, to be honest with you, like, I know what'll happen if he loses. He'll go back, he'll regroup, he'll improve, he'll come again, and we'll keep nice and active, which is something that we haven't been able to do. If he wins, he's the biggest star in the game by a country mile. So it's just too much on the line to worry about it. What will be will be. But we're focused obviously on victory. On the undercard, you've got Andrew Tabiti fighting James Wilson. I don't know if you know much about James Wilson. He's got a huge social media profile. I actually filmed a documentary on him that did over a million views. That was two years ago. It's the first time he's fighting since. Has he ended up on this card? I've no idea. Um, I mean, we had our slots on this card, four fights, which is uh, AJ against Usyk, obviously Philip Hergovic against Zhang, Callum Smith against Border League, Ramler Ali. And 258 had a slot as well, which they gave to Ben Whitaker. And then Saudis and Skills Challenge have put together some fights as well. Rabel, uh, obviously, Tabiti, uh, Badu Jack, you know, other fighters as well that uh, they've worked with before, all they're, all they're friendly with. John Makowski has really recently said in an interview that he's going to be pushing you to work with different promoters. Is there pressure on you to work with, like, say, Frank and PBC and try and make push some fights? We do. I mean, we've just made a, a massive fight with Top Rank with Alicia Baumgardner against Michaela Meyer. We just made a big fight with Michael McKinson and Virgil Ortiz from Golden Boy. We're talking to them about Mungir against Ryder. We're talking and obviously have terms we we're discussing with PBC for Lee Wood and uh, Leo Santa Cruz. Um, we work with every single promoter. Sometimes, you have, you have to understand, a promoter wants to keep their fighter on their platform. So sometimes they'll make excuses about politics and they don't like someone if the business works and it makes sense for everyone the fights happen we work with every promoter we have done over the years sometimes people don't like you sometimes i say something it's, it's all like people who don't understand boxing look at it and go oh the reality is if the fighters want it and the deal makes sense it happens Definitely. And just wrapping up, Chris Eubank Jr. and uh, the Ben fight. I spoke to Dev Sani, I don't know if you know Dev from Frank Warren's team, and he believes with his experience in Box Nation that you guys will struggle to break any records when it comes to pay per view. Is this Dev? Um, Dev's the guy who works for Frank Warren, right? So someone told me yesterday that he said that, uh, stop laughing, Joseph Parker against Joe Joyce will do the same numbers as Chris Eubank Jr. against. Uh, Connor Ben. Can I explain his reason was because he felt it was easy to purchase by the red button. Don't. No one's interested in buying Joe Joyce against Joseph Parker on pay per view. No one. Won't do a hundred thousand buys. Right. We'll do 600, 700. We could do a million buys for you, Bank Ben. It's the biggest fight I've ever seen us do in this country. By the time it comes around. So, yeah. I mean, 
You made me laugh with the first bit when you said about with his experience. Last one, Nassim Hamid's sons, you bumped into him yesterday. Yeah, Any talks on their development? Love, lovely, lovely young men. Do you know what I mean? Really enjoyed the chat. As you get older, you actually realise you have some wisdom that you can pass to the younger generation. When I hang around with those young men, I feel like I'm the same age. And then I realise I'm 20 years older. So they were really polite, really intelligent. They loved the sport. I said, look, any advice you need from me, we're here for you. And uh, good luck to both of them. Thank you, Eddie.